got to learn a lot about Mel and his teammates in, in writing a book about the Big Red. But uh, I do want to make an announcement that uh, these gentlemen don't know it yet, but as you leave tonight down in the hallway, we're going to have a 50-yard dash between Mel Gray and Ivory Crockett. <laughs> and we hope they do it under five minutes. <laughs> You've seen them both walk. <laughs> Ivory, you going to give me his start? Right? <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, Mel, you've got a great story that Ron Jacober told me, and you said you could abbreviate it, so it, it's great. But uh, you had an interesting start to your football career in high school. Well, see, I didn't start playing football until the 10th grade. My mother didn't want me to play. Plus, we didn't have the money to play. I came from a large family, seven boys, two girls. I was the smallest one in the house, and everybody had to take care of me. My youngest brother is 6'4", my brother that's two years older than I is 6'5", and me. Five nine, so I think my mom and dad was playing around when I got conceived. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, I started going to Montgomery High School, and I started playing football. My mother didn't know anything about it, and I lied to the coach because I told them that we didn't have money to play. So they took my name as Melvin, so they they changed it to Mel. So my mother didn't have an inkling that I was playing football. So everybody was saying, man, your son is Grace's, my son. She said, my son's name is Melvin. So if she comes over to the school to look for me, because I had an allergy, I was going to the doctor, and she came in. She says, I'm looking for a Melvin Gray. They say, we don't have a Melvin Gray to go to school there. <laughs> my ass was in trouble. <laughs> So she found a friend of mine and says, Glenford, I'm looking for Melvin. She says, oh, Miss Gray, they changed his name to Mel. She said, what? I named him Melvin. They gave me, it was, it's a long story, man. I almost got my butt kicked because they changed my name. But I had to tell her they was, they put it in the paper. They just shortened it up. They didn't want to spend a lot of ink on it. But anyway, that was all. No, no. The first game that she came to see me play. I was running back a kickoff, and I got the wind knocked out of me, and I'm laying on the turf. And the coaches and the trainers are pulling on my pants, and I looked up, my mother was grabbing my hand. <laughs> <laughs> that was really embarrassing. <laughs> Golly, 16 years old, and your mother's taking you home for playing football. <laughs> anyway, uh, but you know, things worked out very well. You know, Dan Devine came and drafted, well, recruited me, but anyway, that's how that started. Well, and then you got to St. Louis and you gave us uh, spectacular seasons and you are a key element, obviously, in the cardiac card era, 1973, four, five, six. Uh, tell us about uh, winning a championship. Well, after the first two years after playing for Bob Holloway, four, nine, and one, and then Don Coriol came in, another four, nine, and one. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to make it. But Don Coriol came in, and he put a puzzle together. He brought some players in, Terry Metcalf, Will Roger Brother was there, Deardorff, Banks, uh, Conrad Dolberg, can't leave him out. Um, and he did a hell of a job. We won our division for the first time in 25 years. Mr. Bidwell gave everybody in the office a 10% raise. <laughs> he gave us a football. <laughs> we had to pay $25 to have our name put on that ball. Roger, are you? Roger, where are you? you know that. But anyway, it was Don Coryell brought a winner into St. Louis. And St. Louis is a heck of a town, sports town. They loved us. It, I know, you know, when we weren't winning, you all were there. But then Bidwell left, knucklehead. But anyway, uh, I tell you, it was amazing. Uh, I played 12 years. DeMarco never got a Super Bowl ring, man. Loved it here, you know. It, it was fantastic. Uh, the, the fans were wonderful. Uh, my table, I got, I got to mention my table, number 16. Hey, hey. Bunch of the big reds over there. They got Jerry Holloway, you know, Jerry. I won't go into that. Anyway, Tim Van Gaal, the number 16, sitting at his table. But I tell you, we had a great time. I enjoyed it. One more story from you. Obviously, in 1975, uh, on November Sunday, you had to beat the Washington Redskins to get to the point to win that division. And uh, 
the Cardinals needed to get a score. You get inside the – you're down a touchdown. Now you're down with seconds to play. There's going to be fourth down. And uh, you go back into the huddle. Terry Metcalf had juked around three times, couldn't get in the end zone. You're on the eight-yard line. You go back in the huddle and fourth down, and you're thinking to yourself, they're going to do, they're going to do a swing pass to Terry and let him try to get in. That's never going to be my number called. And then what happened? Well, Jim Hart goes out. He comes back in. I said, well, I know we're going to run the ball. We got Jim Otis. Heck, he was, what, 230? He's going to block. They're going to have some running play. And Jim Hart looks at me and says, man, we're coming to you. My heart started beating like a freight train. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God. Well, you know what? Uh, anyway, after he threw me the pass, I jumped in the air, and I caught it, and I crossed the goal line. Today, if they would have had You didn't replay, catch it, Terry. You didn't catch it. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I caught that ball. Every time I look at it, I catch it. But anyway, uh, only one referee saw it. And I, I got to tell you, I paid him so much money. <laughs> Fred Silver. No, but uh, actually, with today, uh, the incident replay, I don't know what they would have called. But I'm glad it wasn't there then. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mel Gray into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame.